Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little guy right here, Tiki Island from Great White Games, where fun lurks. Yeah, that's their tagline. Anyway, uh, this is a family weight game where you're simply trying to get your islanders from your home island, which is being destroyed by some type of natural calamity, to a goal island, which is basically just on the other side of the board. The first player to get all three of their uh, islander tokens from their home island to their goal island is the winner of the game. And you can do that in a number of different ways with some nefarious take that card play or just clever movement and building of islands in an open ocean. Let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works and we'll come back with some final thoughts after that. Now on your turn, you're going to be able to either choose to play a permanent rune card or roll your die. Now the reason you would roll your die is because it's going to determine which special action you possibly will have the opportunity to use. And those different special actions are denoted on each person's playing card. If you roll a one, you can move a four. If you roll a two, you can build two islands. If you roll a three, you can build uh, one island and move two. If you roll a four, it gives you the ability to soar, which means that you can basically fly, and uh, some of the normal moving restrictions don't apply to you that turn, and it also gives you a plus three move. If you roll a five, you can draw a rune card and get plus one move, and if you draw a six, you can basically choose to use somebody else's special action that they activated on their turn. Uh, let's say that you didn't roll the correct, you know, what you wanted, but if you roll the six, it does give you a few more options available in the turn. You don't ever have to use your special actions. You can always just choose to use one of your basic actions. Those basic actions are simply a plus three move, which means that one of your islanders can move three spaces over islands, of course. You can't move over open ocean. Uh, you can also build one, which is simply taking an island tile and placing it onto an open ocean hex, or you can draw a rune. Now, before we go any further, I do feel like I need to explain the rune cards to you. And rune cards basically have four different kinds. You have attack runes, you have buff runes, which will uh, make your forces a little bit stronger in some, some way, shape, or form. And then you also have permanent runes, which will permanently stay in effect on your side of the table, on your tableau, uh, but they can be removed by other kinds of rune cards. And then you have miscellaneous runes, which have some type of general effect. They also give you sometimes plus one move and so forth and so on. Now, there are certain keywords. There are protected runes, which are uh, basically, they don't have an effect on um, islands or islanders that are present with a tiki. You also have ones that are uh, permanent, have the permanent keyword, which means they just stay in front of you. And then there's also unhindered. Unhindered ones will allow you to play this rune on somebody else's turn. Otherwise, you have to play runes on your turn only. But, for example, you have these attacking runes, and this is where some of the uh, take that of the game is going to come into effect. You have the name of it, you have these keywords that are here, uh, the picture which denotes what's, what kind of rune it is. This one is an attacking rune. And then you have the effect that will be carried out uh, on the card, so forth and so on. Now, this one is a specific kind of card that has two possible effects. And with these kinds of cards, you're going to roll a die. If you roll a one or a two, this effect happens. If you roll a three through six, this effect happens. And usually the one and two is something negative to you, and the three to six is something that is negative to somebody else. So now that you have a basic idea of what the rune cards do and how they used, and uh, we can go ahead and show you a basic uh, round. Yellow will be the first player here. Each player starts with a rune card. The last player starts with two because it is a, a disadvantage to go last. And so at the beginning of Yellow's turn, they have to look at their rune card, and if it's a permanent card, they can choose to play it instead of rolling their die for a special action. Well, in this case, they're going to go ahead and do this, and this camouflage card is permanent, and it says basically that you can stun your tokens instead of destroying them. Stunning basically just means that you put your... your uh, 
vill your Islander down on its side. And then the card also states that at the beginning or the end of your turn, they can stand up again. Now, this doesn't keep them from being destroyed throughout the course of the game. By the way, if a uh, token is ever destroyed, it's not taken out of the game. It's simply returned to your starting one of your starting locations. <clears throat> so instead of rolling a, uh, the die for one of the special actions, they're going to play the permanent, and then they can choose to do one of their basic actions. Well, in this specific case, we're going to go ahead and choose to build one, and uh, that means from the Tiki, we can build three out. So one, two, three. Uh, I could build here or here or... You know, it depends. So I'm just going to go ahead and build right out here and try to get a presence out there uh, in the sea right away. So one, two, three spaces away from the Tiki. And that's good. That's the end of the turn. Uh, Pink here is going to roll the die. And they got a two, which means they could build two if they want to, which they will choose to do that. So Pink will take two of their islands. And again, you can build uh, three away from your Tiki. So we're going to go ahead and build these two just like this. Now on blue turn, he doesn't have a, a per permanent room that he wants to play. So he's going to roll and he got a one, which gives him plus four move. Doesn't do him any good right now. So he's just going to uh, do a build action and he will go one, two, three right out here. They don't have anything they want to play right now. So we're going to go ahead and roll the die and see what kind of action they get. They get plus two build. So we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that and get a couple of different islands out there like so. Actually, I think we'll do this one right here. Not that it really matters that much. And so that is the first round of play. And as you can see, we're simply trying to create a land bridge across this uh, open ocean area to try to get our villagers over to the other side. So as we have fast forwarded here a little bit into the game, uh, yellow has rolled a six here, which allows them to choose any of the other actions that have been used uh, since her last turn. So uh, maybe we're going to go ahead and use oranges uh, plus two move and one build. So then the Tiki can basically move one, two, keeping in mind that whenever you move your things on your uh, on the board, you have to be on friendly or neutral hexes. You cannot uh, walk through other people's hexes and you can't stop on other people's hexes. Furthermore, uh, two uh, islanders cannot be on the same hex, even if it's a neutral item, and you can't move through. So it's a, it's kind of an interesting thing here. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to move two, and then we're going to build one. And again, that island can go one, two, three away uh, from the island. We're going to go ahead and put it right here, though. Uh, Pink over here. And they also rolled a six. So um, let's see here. We're going to do a sore move because that's what that is. Basically allows the Tiki or one of the Islanders to fly, not having to worry about other kinds of restrictions. And uh, it also gives us plus three move. So we're going to go one, two. Now, here's the thing. You can also go over open air, uh, ocean spaces with a soar, uh, so I could have gone one, two this way. Now this is a neutral island, a gray color, so it's okay for the Tiki to be on there. And it's also okay for another islander, even of a different color, to be on the same space because this is a neutral island. But two islanders can't be on the same space ever. Over here, they're gonna roll their die and they have plus two move, one build. Hmm. Uh. I think we're just going to go uh, one, two, and then we have a build as well. And so we'll put a build right here, which means that we've kind of blocked purple. Again, there's a little bit of a take that mechanism going on here. And now back to orange. Uh, we're going to roll the die and it's a sore move three. Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to move uh one two three like that and that's all we're going to do and basically this is how the game continues to play until like i said earlier one color gets all three of their islands uh, islanders to their goal island on the other side of the board once somebody has done that the game is automatically over with that person having won
Now, before we get to my actual final thoughts, uh, I did have one glaring omission that I caught just at the tail end of my explanation, and that is being able to use your uh, rune cards in a way other than discarding them for the effect that's on the card. You can also discard them uh, to get plus one move. You can discard one to get plus one build. And you can discard two at a time to gain the soar ability on your movement during your turn. So that is another useful way to utilize your uh, rune cards throughout the course of the game. Now with that having been said, I think that this is a decent family weight game. I don't think that there is a whole lot of uh, deep strategy that's going on here. Everybody pretty much has the same goal and everybody knows exactly what you want to do and how you're probably going to do it. There are some tricks up your sleeves with the different rune cards that can be played and that basically devolves into a take that mechanism more often than not. You can use those buff cards to help yourself out uh, and then of course the attack cards are definite take that mechanisms. More often than not, it is possible, especially on those ones where you have to roll the die for the, to see which outcome actually takes place, that they could backfire on you. So there is a little bit of a, a push your luck mechanism going on there. For me, it feels a lot like the game Eruption. Now, I think Eruption is a better game, uh, generally speaking. Uh, but at the same time, I think that this has a very similar weight and a similar feel to it. Definitely has a very similar theme in that you're trying to protect your villagers from an island that is erupting or some in, somehow being destroyed. Now, as far as pros and cons are concerned, it's um, pretty cut and dry. The uh, components are decent components. They're not ground shaking in any way, shape, or form. I think the size of the game is a is a good thing as well because it's definitely doesn't uh, present itself as this over convoluted game. It has very simple setup. It has very simple rules. Uh, and I think that's a good thing about it. It doesn't try to oversell itself. Um, some of the cons of the game can be there is a very strong take that mechanism to it. You can really, really, really be mean to your other opponents. And t if you take that in the lighthearted nature that the game in which the game resides, no problem. But if you're playing with your family, you could have that younger individual in your family that basically gets their feelings hurt pretty easy. And if you do anything adverse towards them, well, they're going to uh, uh, get the puppy dog face on crocodile tears and all that other kind of stuff. And that can make the game awkward at best. So with all that having been said, I don't think that gamer gamers are going to really enjoy this game that much. However, I think it will find a place within that uh, family game weight category. A uh, little bit heavier than your normal fare, but definitely much, much, much lighter than uh, what you're probably used to playing uh, in any way, shape, or form. So, all that being said, I think that this is a, uh, as far as a family game is concerned, this is a probably a pretty strong six. The reason I would rate it a six and maybe not a seven or an eight is because the take that uh, mechanism that is there is pretty heavy and it's pretty strong. Uh, you could possibly play where you're not trying to mess anybody else up and where you're not trying to get any, in, in anybody else's way and that type of thing, but that will simply elongate the game because you're waiting to get sore or you're waiting uh, to uh, be able to jump over a bunch of other islands or, or some other thing where it... And, and so it kind of devolves in that aspect. In, in order to play this game and play it the way I guess it was supposed to be played, you kind of have to be mean to everybody else at the table at some point. And that probably just won't sit very well in some family settings. And uh, it might actually, I'm going to actually kind of counteract something that I already said. It, it might actually make it shine better in some gamer situations. Because sometimes gamers really like being mean to each other uh, in games. So uh, there's something to that. Basically for me it's a 6 because I don't really care for, especially in my family because I do have a 7 year old and, and he does tend to get his feelings hurt a little bit 
bit easier than everybody else. But that's normal uh, for the younger kids to do that. So again, I understand uh, where this game is trying to rest. And I think it will probably do well that way. Uh, I just don't really like it that much. I did enjoy it, but not overly so. So a six is probably where my rating will rest. Not bad but uh, probably could be good in a couple of uh, different areas. The main one, in my opinion, being the fact that it's a little bit too much. Take that in it. So that's it from me. A 6 out of 10 for Tiki Island. We'll see you guys on the flip side.